Okay, T, you ready? Welcome everybody to the, the agenda of the City Council Special Meeting of the City of Coachella, the Council City as a Coachella Sanitary District, Coachella Fire Protection District, Coachella Finance and Authority, Coachella Education and Government, Access Cable Channel Corporation, Coachella Water Authority and Successor Agency to the Coachella Redevelopment Agency. Uh, the, it's uh, 6.03, we're gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, I'm gonna ask uh, our city clerk if you could note for the record the attendance. Uh, we'll move to approval of the agenda. Mr. City Manager, any changes to the agenda? No changes, Mr. Mayor. All right. Can we get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll motion. There's a motion. Yeah. There's a second. I'll second. Can we get a roll call, please? Actually, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is that aye? Aye. Aye. Motion carries uh, three. Oh, we'll move forward to the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. City Manager. Again, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll move right into our new business. Um, Gabriel. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mayor, members of City Council, Gabriel Perez, your Development Service Director. I have a quick presentation. Uh, so, this item before you is a request to authorize um, the submission of an application for amendment to the sphere of influence for the City of Coachella. Uh, the city can't decide to just automatically grow their spheres just by taking an action it does require action by the Riverside Local Agency Formation Commission. That's a county body that makes this decision for all um, cities in Riverside County. Um, so, so there's an application that's required to do this. Um, there are policies that LAFCO has um, that make a city eligible to include an area within the sphere of influence. Um, there is an area that we are recommending the uh, city council to um, include in the city's sphere of influence, which is known as Pocket 7 by LAFCO. Uh, it is an area that was in the sphere of influence of the city prior to April 27, 2006. And at that time, it was, it was taken out. So it's been out city for more than 10 years. Uh, this is the boundary of that area. It is bounded on the west by Jackson Street, on the south by Avenue 52, and then on the east by Calhoun Street. Um, the northern boundary is the southern boundary of the La Colonia subdivision. Uh, some of the prerequisites by LAFCO is that the area that the city is requesting to include in the sphere of influence demonstrate that the city planned for the needs of the area um, through its general plan. Um, and so some of the things that the city had done in the past was um, identify a sewer and water boundary that actually includes this area. So the city owns its own uh, sanitary and water uh, authority, and this is within that boundary. The city did hold three community outreach meetings for residents and owners in that area, starting in 2022, and then again in uh, two meetings in 2023. Uh, there is a general plan designation that the city council did approve uh, for a state rancho, and the compatible zone would be the residential estate zone. That's a designation that's compatible with what's out there, which is more agricultural uses and a state residential lot. And just a closer look of what was approved for the general plan. And then the corner suburban retail where the, um, the funeral home is located. Here's the boundary of the Coachella Sanitary District. So in red shows where that boundary is. So it goes all the way uh, to Jackson Street, down south, all the way to Airport Boulevard, and then it proceeds further east. And this is the boundary of the Water Authority, uh, having a similar boundary um, all the way to, to the west at Jackson Street. 
Um, I, I last presented this to the city council, just demonstrating what the sphere of influence for the city of Coachella looked like in 1983. It went all the way to Jefferson Street, uh, to the north at, around 51st Street, and just south of Airport Boulevard. So that's the area in the yellow. Um, the blue boundary shows the area that the city grew, grew into since that time, since 1983. Um, in 2004, this shows what the sphere of influence looked like for the city of Coachella. So the orange hash area is where the sphere of influence for the city was in the past. So it went all the way to Monroe Street and just south of Airport Boulevard, um, which shown with the arrow and the red boundary is the P7 area. Oops. Okay. So this map shows kind of what happened, right? So in 2005, um, the city of La Quinta did propose um, a few options. They proposed one option to um, stop their sphere of influence boundaries at Jackson Street. Um, following November 21st, uh, there was um, some documentation in the minutes with LAFCO that uh, there was discussion between city officials of La Quinta and City Coachella, that Jackson Street would be the dividing boundary for the sphere of influence. Um, but that didn't happen with LAFCO. It actually ended up um, acquiring more of, of the area that went all the way to Harrison Street um, uh, for the for City of La Quinta in their sphere of influence. The pocket seven was left out. It was determined by LAFCO uh, at the request of, of La Quinta to leave it out of their sphere of influence because it was a difficult area to serve. Um, and therefore it wasn't left in any one sphere of influence. It's not in the sphere of influence of Indio, not in the sphere of influence of La Quinta or the sphere of influence of Coachella. So just giving you that background, uh, but staff recommends that uh, uh, council approve the resolution authorizing the submission of the application to Riverside LAFCO. There still is a process after this. We just have to submit that application. LAFCO has to consider it and they would have to approve this to be in the sphere of influence for the city. That's the end of my presentation. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? No questions. Uh, Gabriel, I think this is a good presentation and I think it's important that let it be said um, regarding kind of the historical uh, I think it's been an injustice to the city of Coachella where, you know, even in our conversations in 04, and I wasn't here, but just reading the minutes and everything else, and then the moves that were made, you know, by LAFCO and the board there to essentially just take a whole swath of, of our, uh, our, our sphere of influence from us. I think it's just one of the biggest injustices. Now, one of the things that you haven't layered over this, and it'd be a good idea to layer over it, is the city of Coachella's water and sewer authorities infrastructure. So, you know, if you go back to the the sewer and the water authority, we have pipe that extends to west side to the homes out there near um CV High School, uh, we have pipes that just that move out in that direction. And we also have not only water, but sewer, right? And so I think it's important that the council just educate themselves on our infrastructure that's out there if they don't already know. Um, again, this th that infrastructure has been paid for by you know, our taxpayers with the assumption that under the law, that you could grow your, you basically can extend your your infrastructure outside of your boundaries, and so the fact that that even now LAFCO would do this, and the fact that you know, um, it, it it somewhat creates a a, and then, and then the other thing we also need to understand is that there's an agreement between CVWD and Coachella, where we've agreed to our service territories. Um, now, perhaps those need to get ratified and looked at through LAFCO, but nevertheless, there's an agreement between these agencies in terms of what we will be covering and what agent and what it, what they will be covering. So the more that we could all be on the same page and more educated about it, I think it's important because, you know, while in this 
quadrant, looking at this, saying, hey, this is out of our area. There's still more that we should really look at as we as we kind of lay out our annexation strategy and our sphere of influence change strategies. And it's going to be very, very important that I think that as an administration, Gabriel, that that we really provide the resources and the technical expertise to match what the city of La Quinta is doing. And I would, I would ask council to take a look at their different study sessions and, and really get in tune in terms of how they're gonna to try to present their different financial models or their ability to serve. And we need to match that energy. Um, this isn't just an exercise of, hey, this is P7, but it should really be a comprehensive strategy on how we're gonna move. And we have some natural partners, right? Like we have uh, the school district, for example, that's up near Monroe. They own land all the way up, clearly up into right off of Monroe. And they all wanna be within the city of Coachella. Why? Because for those maybe that don't know, when they extend outside of the city of Coachella and go to like La Quinta or go to Indio, there are efforts out in those communities that people wanna de-annex from Coachella Valley Unified School District and want to annex to Desert Sands Unified School District, well, that creates a taxing disadvantage. And so all of these little points of interest, it's something that we need to just have the language and the tools to carry out. The other side of this, too, is that, you know, there is, there is this notion that, you know, La Quinta wants to kind of continue to move and annex more, but to do more of the same which we know that a lot of their, and it's even in their own reports that a lot of their homes are second homes, you know, they're, when they're during the off season or during, you know, summer times, their population really shrinks inside of their, and it's, it's well documented and maybe you should provide that information to the council as well. And, and for us, it's about trying to create housing for all and, and, and opportunities for our residents to um, be able to, enjoy uh, that type of land and, and that we've always kind of planned for in, in, from the get-go. So, so these are all the, the things that it, it's, it's complex. It's, it's political in nature as well. It, it's um, it's uh, takes, gonna take us talking to different property owners out there as well. When, when these spheres of influence changes happen, we need to be really prepared, but I, I'm happy at least on, on P7 that we have a good strategy and we're going to be hopefully successful there. Understanding that the city of India wants this place, this, this little land too. And that's okay. That's okay. Like we, we don't, we don't need to give it to them and we don't need to acquiesce to it either. And so I, I, I think that with, with respect to how we're laying things out, this is a good thing. So I'll, I'll motion to approve. Gabriel, um, where we see the the boundaries of the of the water lines, so it goes up to Jackson, but then on the on one of your pages it goes. Is there a certain part that goes farther than Jackson? That water and sewer. No, I know it's water and sewer, but so that's uh, the sewer. next one, the one before. Oh. Hmm. This this one's the sewer. District water. No, so I, I so I understand that the sewer and the water, but so the one that I have here, it shows. So here we go straight down Jackson, and the one I have here goes a little further than Jackson. Oh, See okay. Yeah. So that boundary. Let me let me go to a map that shows that I have that. There it is. Okay. There. That's the zip code boundary uh, ninety two three six. Yes. Oh, got it. Okay. From the postal code. Okay. Which is important to laughable too, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, and then, so educate me if, in case I don't know what our spear is. When we're looking into up to Airport Boulevard, is that our spear? Yeah, I can show you that I, on today. I know that I have looked at it at one time. Today, it's not Gabriel. The area, the area cut out. And, the, and here's the interesting thing, is that the area cut out on, on our sphere in front of the airport, it was like, it was cut out. And then they, and then what they did is they gave us essentially going up to like all the way up to like Avenue 62 to include the new, the new college out there, right? Or that was the idea. 
that Coachella was going to extend all the way towards like that Mecca line. But you may want to look at it. Does our sphere is is that red line? And by the way, the the little diagonal that's the tribe, right? The the little checkered board right there. On yes, the, I, I guess. So Gabriel, what do you know of that sphere going up to Earthquake Boulevard? Um. So if you see the red boundary there with everything in purple south of the city boundary, yes, that is our sphere of influence. Um, so that would be east of Cesar Chavez uh, Street and and then as far south as Airport Boulevard, that's the city's sphere of influence right now. So up to that where we see that red that red boundary, right. that is all included in our sphere right now. Yes. And then the mayor talks about what areas. The, I'm talking about everything from Harrison Cesar Chavez shooting off to Monroe. If you can go back to the historical map. Basically that right there. So that was our original sphere. All of that diagonal line goes to 52 and Monroe. And then in 2004, where we were here, that's when all these decisions started happening. And, and then all of that little line right there, all that from Monroe to, to Jackson, that all of a sudden became the Quinta Sphere of Influence. When historically, since 1983, it was Coachella's. If you look at Coachella's, that's 40 years ago. And it, I mean, up until 2004, it was all within our sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. all of it and if you look at how the city council was investing you look at the water and you see that's the other thing you need to layer on this map is showing the water and sewer that we've moved out into that area and i remember when i was at cda and we have to look at the minutes and look at different information but the city actually built the track and field out of kuwia desert academy because all the kids go there all of our kids go to i went to cda and uh you know and so so that to me is like like, you know, it's kind of like, oh, no, that's not Coachella. It's like, what do you mean? We've been planning for that to be Coachella. Our schools are there. They're from Coachella. You know, the expansion of the schools, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Coachella, the, high, the CVUSD owns a big property that's right next to the school, a CDA, that is, on 52. And that's where our kids are going to go, too. So is that where the new high school should go? Maybe. Why not? You know, that's not, not a, and that's all Coachella Valley High School. You know, so so to me that those are the 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 fine points that we need to really kind of protect on how what's what is that section south the south north what well, I don't know what how do we describe it from here that would be the east like the northeast so at one time it extend all the way to Monroe and what we're going after is only up until Jackson. To Jackson and South of 52. And south of 52. Yeah. So just the area in that little like red, red rectangle with the arrow pointing to it. Yeah. What is, what is what is that? That's the pocket seven area. Oh, okay. That's not in any sphere of influence. Okay. Right. That Easy. happens to be where, yeah, those, those ranches, I think that mm -hmm. we all had discussed before. Yeah. With this request, we're, we're not making any requests for the additional area. Uh, just this is just show, showing historical purposes what used to be in the sphere. And then, and then, are we requesting to remove any sphere or no? Not yet. No. Because I I know that that was a discussion at one point, and so I'm just trying to figure out where we're at with this and then what the history is. And I know that there's been some work already done as far as community um, engagement. And so, can you share a bit about that community engagement? Or including the pocket seven area? Yes. Yeah, so there were, and I mentioned this in an earlier slide, there were three meetings that occurred. So one October 4th, 2022, this was at the Polo Estate. Um, it's a property off of uh, Jackson Street. And so we sent notices to property owners, um, inviting them to the meeting and just kind of hear their thoughts about um, being a part of the spirit of influence for the city. Then on June twentieth, we we did have another one um, at the same property, uh, and then we sent notices again for that that meeting. Now there were a different set of property owners that showed up for the June twentieth meeting than the October fourth meeting. 
Uh, some of those owners requested a separate meeting with the city on July 11th. And so we held that meeting here at the, at the library at their request. There was probably about I don't know, like 25 um, property owners that showed up to that meeting. And they were, basically they were interested in more like, what are the uses that are gonna be permitted in this area? Are we gonna lose our ability to do what we do currently on our property? And that's why we worked on accommodating those uses in the residential estate zone. Yeah, they've done a very good job of becoming educated of zoning usage. Yeah. And then Gabriel, how come you didn't share with us about the community engagement? I would have liked to attend the July 11th meeting. We sent it out to the community, and, you know, to uh, participate. You know, the council wished to attend. We we, we were definitely invited at the future engagement. This one was just to reach out to the community to see what they what their thoughts were about joining the city, what uh, you know, what what they would like to see in regards to zoning, what their future plans are in development. So we, that was just more for community engagement, more for the property owners to to, to let us know what what they're looking at. Well, when I think of community engagement, I think that city council should always be there. I know that some of the other cities have been having these type of public engagements and there, there's been members of council always present. Maybe not all of them you know, have been able to become available, but there has always been a presence of council members at least to answer questions. And I think it would have been beneficial to send a notice and invitation to council members or at least inform us because I because none of us knew well I I wasn't aware so actually it's funny because some of the community engagement meetings I found out through my colleagues in in other cities so they they were better informed than I was about what was going on and you know anytime a colleague from another city is telling me what's happening in Coachella it is a little bit humiliating because they know more than I do and I was like I, I didn't know anything about that and so Moving forward, I, I think that you should keep us in the circle. That way, at least if people reach out and some of the um, owners reached out afterwards and they were kind of letting me know what was happening. And honestly, I had no clue what they were talking about. So I will say that, um, you know, I think we should be, well, not I think, we should be kept informed about what's going out there. And especially when it comes to community engagement, I think, I think that's when we should be more present. I concur. You should have told us that. But, and so we'll we'll take when you know this goes up in front of Lapo, we'll take you know your word and your word that there was proper vetting of the community and uh, that we have the support, right? I think that that's the, the thing there is that it's always important for us to understand is the support there. And so so I, I feel like uh we'll 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 move accordingly. What was their what was their input? Were they um, did they talk about wanting to go into the city of Coachella Spirit? Yeah, most of the people that were there were in support. Um, you know, a lot of them wanted more information. So that second meeting was really important, June twentieth, and uh, and after that meeting, that's when we got comments on on the zoning and the permitted uses that we were considering. Uh, a lot of them wanted to make sure that they can continue doing what they wanted to do or had plans for other things, right? So we heard some had plans for maybe doing a restaurant associated with um, like a palm grove. So we took that into consideration and presented that to, to you all. Sure. And then um, I know really quickly when, so when we put this application in, it's just the next application that we put to LAFCO is just simply to include P7. Is that is that it, or what else are you guys asking for? No, just that in the sphere of influence. Um, yeah, the the council could act to add other areas that wanted to, um, but that was the area that we knew that used to be in the sphere and made sense to come back because we um, already intended to provide service in that area. And the reason I ask is because I'm not really in support of removing anything that we are currently in the sphere of influence. And so I know that there was a discussion and I just want to make sure that, you know, it's known that I, I don't support removing anything that we do have in the sphere of influence. Like, okay, we give and take, you know, I just, I don't support them. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah, there's no proposed removal. That's okay. yeah. Thank you. But, but I will say that, it, that I, I think my comments are basically saying, hey, look, if we want to consider this phase one, 
let's consider it phase one and we need to start looking at phase two and and at least covering and moving to get what is our 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 water and sewer authority boundaries within basically the sphere of influence of Coachella. So that that right there is where I'm asking staff to put together a, a pretty comprehensive game plan that that looks at a also financial support and, and professional support to allow us to really kind of move forward and and when the opportunity comes to to uh, go after and change those spheres. And you know, with the support of the property owners, there is interest from property owners. There are people that want to come into Coachella. And so we we this is the time to talk about it where it's like, hey, phase one, let's move to phase two uh, after after we move on this. But if there are no other questions or comments, then ask for a motion. You made a motion earlier, I'll second it. There's a motion, there's a second. Can we get a roll call? Council member Figueroa absent. Council member uh, Virgen? Aye. Council member uh, Delgado? Yes. Mayor for Tim Galarza? Aye. Mayor Hernandez? I uh, next public comments. Anyone in the public like to comment? Seeing none, we'll move on now to adjournment. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.